Hello all my JavaScript friends, this is the Virtuoid aka Mike Smith and this is fun with JavaScript our jigsaw puzzle game. Okay, in our first video we're going to design the system and get everything ready to do our unit test which will be in later videos. So I've got here just an absolute plain everything GitHub repository that I literally just created about 15 minutes ago. The only thing I've changed here is I've started to put the first parts of the readme that I have in my repository, which is again, fwjs-jigsaw-puzzle on the virtual web accounts public. It's free and everything I do here is free. You can just have it and do with it whatever you wish. So what I'm gonna do first of all here is I'm gonna go through very quickly my ideas of how I want this game designed. Then after that, we're gonna write the test. That will be in another video, but we're gonna write the test that will help us design our JavaScript to, to be able to hopefully match the, the design here. So how's this going to work? So the first thing I wanna do here is basically make sure that I know that I wanna keep all these objects immutable. This is something I'm gonna to try to experiment around with. Now immutability means that once I create an object, it cannot be changed by any outside factor. So if I was to create a, a wheel object or something like that, um, I'm just using a term I happen to use in my uh, racing games here. If I created a wheel object, there's nothing on the outside that would be able to change that. It can suggest changes, it can say, hey, you know, do something to your friction or something like that and then internally the wheel will change its friction but it will not allow anything from the outside to make changes to it and this is being able to try to keep the date the integrity of the data so i just want to put myself a little note here to say hey if i'm gonna make everything uh immutable make sure i use object seals so that's just something you know for me uh, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, go ahead and get a design now as i mentioned in my very introductory video we basically have three pieces to uh, this to the design of a jigsaw puzzle we have what's called the vertex we have a piece and we have the puzzle itself and a vertex is basically just a point on a piece and that's it it's just a simple immutable point a piece is a group of vertexes and a puzzle is a group of pieces or collection i should say not a group a piece is a collection of vertexes while a puzzle is a collection of pieces and so the interaction of all these pieces with their vertexes will, will t allow us to be able to figure out how these pieces fit together. And again, we're not worried about edges, we're not worrying about those really fancy things. We'll get to all that in the graphics part. So let's take a look at our three pieces. Our first piece is going to be the vertex. And this is the vertex. Basically, there must exist a vertex that contains a unique identifier and is immutable. And this is kind of what we want to start to work with here. Now, this unique identifier is a unique identifier. We'll probably use the UUID identifiers, you know, something that effect. Uh, there's really no need for a vertex to uh, have an ID assigned to it by the user, at least as far as I know, as right now. So we're going to have a, a unique identifier. All right, so let's now take a look at the piece. And here's our piece. There must exist a piece that contains an array of vertices. Of course, actually, it's going to be a collection of vertices. It must contain at least one vertex. It's kind of stupid to have a piece without any kind of vertexes. And again, a vertex, basically, if you take a, if you think of a square as being a, a puzzle piece, there'll be four vertexes. And even a very strange looking puzzle piece is only going to have maybe three or four vertexes on it. So it's got to have at least one vertex. Without any vertex, there's no way we know where it's going to go inside the, inside the puzzle. So it's got to have at least one vertex. It must contain a unique identifier and again is immutable. That's going to be very important. I want to make absolutely certain that they are immutable. A little, a little note here. Let's uh, put this on here. This is, some, this is a little note that doesn't really describe the piece itself, but decides something that can be done with the piece, is that when two pieces share two or more vertex, vertices, they're said to be connected. And that's how we're going to be able to determine whether one piece connects to another, is not whether they're physically next to each other, but that their, two of their vertexes connect, connect up. Now, in reality, if you think about it, we could only have just, we really just only need one vertex. We, we could technically have uh, just a corner hook up to a corner if we so desire. I think for this particular case, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure at least two vertices will match up to a puzzle piece. And what this basically means is that we could technically have three pieces must match up or four pieces 
four, excuse me, th three vertices must match up or four vertices must match up. And by doing that, we can have some really wonderfully complicated pieces in there, 3D pieces, 4D pieces, 5D pieces, da -da -da, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's, so I basically want to make myself a note here of how I, I want pieces to be able to talk to or to, to connect to each other. And that was basically when they share two vertices. All right, how about the puzzle? So let's talk about the puzzle next. Let's get the data up here. So there must exist at least a puzzle that contains at least two pieces. It's kind of stupid to have a puzzle that has just one piece. So it's got to have at least two pieces in it. Well, that's, that's very easy. The collection of pieces must not have duplicate identifiers. So if we have identifiers in with the uh, puzzle, they cannot have, there cannot be any kind of duplicate identifiers. The collection of vertices will not have duplicate identifiers. Now, that could mean duplicate uh, uh, vertices could be in a piece, like piece A contained vertex number one and piece B contained vertex number one, but the collection of vertices themselves must all be completely unique. Okay, no two pieces will contain the same vertices. That is, the collection of vertices in one piece must not be the same collection of vertices in the second piece. So if piece one contains the vertexes A, B, C, and D, and piece two contains vertexes A, B, C, and D, that can happen. Now, they can have multiple matches. You can have one piece have an A, B, C, and D, another one have an A, B, C, and E, or F, or G, or whatever. That's fine, but they all can't have the exact same vertices. If they do, they're basically the exact same piece, which means then you have duplicate pieces, which means then that just can't be done. Number five is each piece must have a connection with at least one other piece. No, no pieces can be orphaned. That basically means if you, ha if you have a two-piece puzzle and one has the vertexes of A, B, C, and D, the other one has vertexes of E, F, G, and H, that can't be done because obviously there's no way those two can connect. You've got to have at least two pieces to share two or more vertices or the puzzle game will not work. So what is going to be our order of play? Let's pop that down here. Order play is going to be that a puzzle is selected, of course. Pieces are going to be randomized. A player will pick up a piece, move it, and place it next to another piece. Each vertex in a piece is compared against the vertexes of another piece, and as long as the vertexes are close to each other graphically. And this is going to be something we're not going to be able to determine when we build the mechanics of the game, which is step number one. We we're not going to really be able to determine anything like that, determine that until we get to the second part, the graphical part, so that when we drop two pieces together, we're going to need some sort of algorithm to say, okay, I've got vertices that are very close to each other, so let's check to make sure that we're, we're good with these, two, with these two particular pieces. If two vertices are close enough, then the if two vertices are close enough, then the vertexes are compared. If two vertices are the same, it's considered a match, and the next vertex is checked. Or if we happen to have a puzzle which we have a minimum of three or a minimum of four, a minimum of five, then that could be whatever. In my case, for this demo, for this particular go through, I'm just going to have a minimum of two. After checking all the vertices, if the piece is two or more vertices that match another piece, then the two pieces are placed together and, and then be moved together. It's kind of bad English there. But basically what that means is that once we find out that piece A and piece B can connect each other, they create a new piece called piece C that now has six that has four vertices, well actually has six vertices on its own. You know, if we had A, B, C, and D vertices and A, B, E, and F vertices, they now have A, B, C, D, E, and F vertices. And so therefore they can then the player will be able to move both of those that new piece at the same time and piece a and, P, and the first piece and the second piece are now re, have now gotten their vertices removed and they are retired from the game so basically the idea here is that we can continue play until we have one piece left on the board once we have one piece left on the board that piece contains all the vertices everybody's happy the game is over at that point as it says so right here the game is over when there's no individual pieces. That is actually wrong. The game is actually over when there's one. When there is one individual piece. Because as soon as there's one individual piece, there's nothing more we can do about that. In fact, let me go ahead and make that change on my master. I happen to have the master FWJS-Jigsaw-Puzzle that I'm looking at here of the work that I've already done with it. And uh, what I'm working on here is, is a live version of the repository, which is uh, private. So that way I can show you how I built everything. I can kind of test it first in FWJS. So if you're to go FWJS dash puzzle dash, dash puzzle right now, uh, you'll see all of the code and not just what I'm doing here. But who cares? Anyway, that doesn't matter. So there's the there's there's 
these are the rules that I'm thinking of, and here is the order of play that I'm thinking of. So what we're going to be concentrating on first here is just let's go ahead and get our system set up and ready to go. And then in the next videos, we will go ahead and make the uh, uh, puzzle pieces, the, the vertex, the, the piece, and the puzzle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our VEAT. And VEAT is our uh, packaging component, which packages up all of our uh, JavaScript and our HTML or our CSS in order to be able to deliver it as a static site as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And Vite, that Vitka system is uh, www.vite.com, I believe. Let me check that. No, it's www. Oh, actually, it's not even that. It's vitejs.dev. So let's go ahead and install Vite and let's do it to it. So for us, we're going to do uh, npm create vite latest. Now, there's one interesting thing about creating vite is that uh, okay to proceed? Yeah, of course it's okay to proceed. Project name. All right, so basically, the project name is going to be fwjs dot jigsaw puzzle. Select a framework. It's going to, as you can tell here, it says support review, React, React Lit, Svelte anything else, we're going to select vanilla JavaScript. Why? Because we just did JavaScript here. We don't do frameworks. Select a variant, TypeScript or JavaScript. We're going to select JavaScript. Why? Because we don't use TypeScript here. TypeScript's great. I love TypeScript, but no, we're doing everything through vanilla JavaScript. And it's done. Now, here's the problem I don't like with Vite here is that um, it's, of course, I spelled FWJS wrong, but basically what it has done here, let's do a directory. It has put the jigsaw puzzle in its own directory. So was that a mistake on my part? No, because if I'd gone backwards to dev projects and I tried to run this, it was crash on me saying, hey, that directory already exists. Can I replace everything in that directory? And you're gonna say, hell no, excuse me. And you're gonna say, no, I'm not gonna do that. You don't wanna replace things in your directory because you've already created the GitHub directory. So, you know, kind of what I've done here is uh, with, with Vite here is that it's created this jigsaw puzzle. Uh, the only thing I wanna do here is I want to do git ignore. I want to copy all of this to my own personal git ignore. Let's go down the bottom. And it's got a couple of, um, uh, got some copies in there. So let's get rid of that. So we've copied that to the git ignore. And then past that point there, uh, basically what we want to do is we want to uh, copy the git ignore the package.json and that's pretty much it to our directory let's refactor Get exist oh, oh no 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 yeah skip that one they want to do that so i just want to do package.json and say do you want to run npm install uh yeah i certainly do okay so let's run npm install and let's let install do its thing and install is already finished at this particular point in time, we don't need to have to worry about anything else. So we can delete all of this. Delete. And oops, and yeah, we could have gotten rid of that too. So we delete that. Add externally added files. I don't like doing that. That's that's my stuff here. So okay, package.json. Let's add that to our Git repository. And I did the wrong. Keystrokes. Let's do that again. It should be whoops, 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 get, 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 get. All right. Let's see. Get uh, control, control alt A. Okay, my bad. Let's add package and package.json. So that's all been added. So now we've got, now we have our, let's bring up our package.json. So now we have our dev dependencies for Vite and it's given us our dev build and preview. So that's our Vite. What's, there's one more package we want to put in here and that's our Cypress package. And Cypress is our unit test and end to end testing package. We're going to use Cypress for, to do our testing for on um, both sides of it, both of the, uh, both the mechanics of the game and the graphics. The graphics are going to be the end to end where we're going to sit there and test say, you know, if they click here, we expect this to happen, things like that. And in the end, the, the mechanics of it, the, the, the testing are, is going to be, you know, hey, you know, once we create a puzzle, it's got to have this number of vertexes and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's install Cypress. You can go to Cypress at, at Cypress.io. You can go to Cypress at Cypress.io and it will tell you everything you need to know about installing Cypress. It's extraordinarily easy. 
again, npm install Cypress. La 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 It will eventually finish up. Ba 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 da 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 ba da. And through the magic of television, we are all finished up there. So let's see what changes it made to our package.json package system. And our package.json did not change because I messed up. Let's try that again. Okay, to install Cypress, all we have to do is type in Cypress install and we'll do the save dev. And through the magic of television, we are all finished up. So let's take a look at what our package.json has changed. And yep, we got Cypress inside there. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add the test and test CI. These are, these are our two test commands for testing using Cypress. Uh, test and test CI will allow us to uh, either use the interactive UI version of, of uh, Cypress or the test this test CI here will actually will allow us to use it in a CI type environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back inside here. We're going to clear off the screen and we're going to go run npm run test. This will do the Cypress open and this will allow us to basically initialize Cypress and it will get us all you know, create all the different directories for us and everything and get us all running. So what will happen is you'll get a screen that will look like this. Welcome to Cypress. ET testing is not configured. We're going to configure component testing as if you had Angular components or React components or Vue components. We don't have that. So we have clicked on uh, NDE testing. It's now written out our configuration files. Just take all the examples that you currently have. No big deal. Click on continue. Let it do its thing. Choose the browser. We'll start ET testing inside Chrome. And then it will bring up a page that will look like this. Scaffold example sec, uh, uh, specs or create a new spec. Uh, let's create a new spec because if we do example specs, actually I would encourage you to go ahead and do ex example specs if you've never used Cypress before because that will allow you to basically see a lot of different examples of how to use Cypress. We're not going to deal with that. We're just going to do a, create a whole new spec. We'll just call it spec.cy.js. We'll create the spec. Does that look okay to you? It says, I said, yeah, it looks fine. Okay, run the spec. It runs the spec and it says blah, 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 da, da, da. There it is. Hey, it's all up and running and it seems to work fine. The, the spec passes. So this will allow us basically all of our specs will end up appearing inside here and then we could test each one individually at a time. So when we create our three different specification files, we'll be able to create the, the, the vertex, the piece and the puzzle. They will show up here and then we can run them one at a time to make sure that we've got the correct specs or the correct code written for our specs. And that pretty much ends. Oh, actually, what I want to do is I want to show you here is the changes that's made here. There is all of our Cypress stuff, our support files, our fixtures. You don't have to really change anything outside of the box here for our particular purposes. Once we get into the graphical designs, we have to change the ETE.js examples to bring in certain libraries. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We're not at that bridge yet. It's getting close, but we're not there as of yet. Cypress.config uh, tells you everything. We, you know, it's, uh, again, some things that you... Um, we'll need to know later on, which we don't need to know as of right now. So that's actually pretty much it. There really is nothing else to getting this uh, working. Uh, so our very next, this is our first video that we got everything set up. We got our beats set up for our, which is basically a uh, web pack um, and, you know, a front end tool. And then we got Cypress for our unit testing. So we'll be ready to go in our next video for doing the unit testing itself. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please click on the like button below. If you wish to keep informed about new content, click on the subscribe button. And as always, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is the Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith. We'll see you later.